rips one right through the middle. Northgraves hits another one in a gap. If that one gets by, Sweeney's going to score. Northgraves is going to end up on third base. Here comes the throw. Northgraves is in with a triple. The fly ball hit deep in the right field. Buckley doesn't play the ball and lets it bounce in front of him. Holliston scores another. Drives Northgraves in. Holliston fans all applauding, all standing, cheering on this club who have had a remarkable performance in having beaten the iron of the league. And Kodani strikes out McNabb as they stream on the field. Absolute ecstasy. Holliston wins the Division II Massachusetts State Championship, defeating the North Middlesex Patriots. Nine to five. It's every baseball team's goal to win the championship. It's every player's dream to bat in the winning run. It's every coach's dream to have a championship team. And it's his job to prepare his players to perform at the championship level. A lot of hard work, preparation, and training go into winning a championship. And who wins? The team that is best prepared. The team you just saw win the state championship was prepared. They went through a batting program which trained them to hit better. It gave them the technique and confidence to hit under championship pressure. With this kind of training, each player becomes a threat to put the ball in play, and the dream to bat in the winning run becomes a reality. Over the past 20 years, Harvey Krupnik has developed a unique step-by-step -step program for teaching hitting. According to Collegiate Baseball newspaper, Harvey is recognized as one of the authoritative leaders in the art of hitting a baseball and is one of the nation's pioneers in hitting schools and clinics. His scientific approach to hitting, as well as his research into the area, is recognized as without equal. The result has been the development of a unique, time-saving program to train players to hit consistently, with more power, and to all fields. In fact, Coach Krupnik's teams consistently hit over 300, and win an average of 70% of their games. Much of his team's success is due to the step-by-step -step batting program described in this film. This is the all-new How to Teach and Learn the Art of Hitting, featuring the secrets of teaching wrist hitting. And now, here's Harvey to start us off. Hi, let me introduce myself to you. I'm Harvey Krupnik, and welcome to the Harvey Krupnik Batting School, located here in Framingham, Massachusetts. We're here to explain and demonstrate how to teach and learn the art of hitting. And also to highlight some new innovative training drills on how to teach wrist hitting, good quick wrist hitting. Now I know you have your style and philosophy of teaching hitting and I have mine. And I'd like to share with you today some of my ideas on how to teach hitting and perhaps you might want to cooperate, incorporate some of them in your programs. Now this program has been very successful as many of the hitters that come out of the batting school often are in the top 10 hitters in their league. And this year, our Holliston High School varsity baseball team had a team batting average of 378. Out of 17 players, 15 hit over 300. And out of those 15, six hit over 400. Now this was our second time we got to the state finals in the last four years. And four years ago, we won the state championship and we had a team batting average of 385. So I really feel this program will work for you and it'll be a benefit to your players. Okay, I'd like to give you an overview of the teaching sequence that I use when I'm going through this in my batting school or with my high school players. The first step is to give explanations and demonstrations of the terminology that you're going to be using. Uh, for instance, we use balance, and I explain balance, and then we go into the five basic hitting positions and one swing, and we go into effective use of hands, and that's your first step as a, as a teacher. The second step is to take the ball players out on a field or the floor and go through the movements of hitting and explain it to them. And it's almost like shadow swinging where we're going through the mechanics of hitting. The next step is to go through swing drills, which develops the hand actions and the wrist manipulations. 
Once you get done with your swing drills, you can move on to your T drills. And right here, we're observing a sequence of T drills, which helps reinforce the shadow swinging and the terminologies that you're using in your explanations and demonstrations. And finally, after the T drills, we use ball toss drills. And the ball toss drills incorporate eye-hand coordination actions and timing versus off the tee, you get your mind-muscle memory patterns uh, of movement to solidify the mechanics of hitting. And finally, we all know that the end result of hitting is seeing and reacting, or see ball, hit ball, and we finish up with a long toss underhand from the side, which is like a ball toss drill, and we go fast, fast, slow, slow, and we try to get the hitters off balance or get them to keep their weight back so that their body can complement their hands. So whatever their eyes and hands see, their body reacts. So these are the six major areas that I cover through uh, drill sequences, and this gets the kids to react in the games. Okay. The first thing we want to do with our players is to be able to define the mechanics of hitting and what the actual movements are. And this is what I'd like to cover right now. Okay, the first thing we have to do as a hitter is be balanced. And balance means from the stance right through the swing to the follow through, you can maintain your balance around the plate. Now, that means we're on a very narrow base. Your feet, your back foot is pivoted, your back heel is up, and the front foot is braced. Okay, so balance is something that almost no one can teach you, but it's something that you can practice and get better at. Now, things that take you away from being off, off, from being off balance is any time you stride and you try to turn and your back heel stays down. If your back heel stays down, it pulls your hips and pulls your shoulders back, locks your hip, and you won't be able to pivot and get your backside through or open your hips. So we have to have a good pivot and be able to maintain balance. Now, the front foot strides out into a closed position. Now, show it here. The front foot strides closed. Then, as you get into the hitting area, your front toe opens as you swing the bat through. So, balance is the first critical thing. Now, what we all have going for us is eye-hand coordination and reaction. And the first thing that takes away from coordination and reaction is poor balance. So we have to maintain balance. So the first major area is what? Can you yeah, say it? Balance. balance. Thanks, guys. Okay. Now the second major thing we're going to talk about is the positions of the swing. Now as every hitter takes one swing of the bat, I have five positions that I like to describe to players. The first position is a comfortable stance, which means knees are flexed. Weight is on the inside edges of the feet. And as you sit with your knees a little bit, your shoulders come over your knees so you're up on the balls of your feet. Elbows are down and relaxed, shoulders are down and relaxed. Okay, the next move after a comfortable stance, and oh yes, the eyes are parallel to the ground and not tilted. So you get a good visual look at the ball. The second position you have to go to is striding and cocking. So as your front foot or your stride foot goes forward, your hands go away or your back elbow draws back. All right, so as my stride goes forward, my weight stays back. I'm able to keep it back because my back knee is a little bit bent and I'm not striding and giving up the back leg, which would be a lunge position. So I'm gonna stride and keep my hands back. All right, so your second position is striding and cocking or step to swing. Third position, is a technique of bringing the hands into the hitting area. And that is what I call a check swing position. So as I stride and draw my hands back, I'm gonna pivot and bring my hands out front. Okay, right now I'm in a check swing position and I've got the angle of the bat up and not down. Now this is a big key in the technique of bringing the hands to the ball. There's a lot of hitters bring the hands flat back here and that causes dragging actions. So at this time, as we go into the check swing position, our hands get way out front, the barrel's up, I'm not letting it sag. Okay, fourth position is point of contact. The point at which we hit the ball is a position that every good hitter gets into. 
The back foot has a nice pivot. Front leg is braced. Head is down the line of the top arm, down along the back shoulder. Arms are extended. Now the point at which we hit the ball, somewhere along this line right here, our fists or hands are in this position. That means knuckles up and knuckles down. Okay, so as I get into this position here, I could actually hit the ball here, 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 and right out to here. Now at this point, my hands turn. They turn in this manner. I round out this wrist, turn these knuckles under rather than over. That keeps the trademark in an up position. Here is Chuck's stop action wrist swing. Now let's clearly illustrate the wrist actions with the aid of a tennis racket. I want to explain in using a tennis racket for teaching hitting, when you want to explain to your players how to turn the wrist properly. The face of the tennis racket is, is open right now. This is closed. Okay. Now with two hands on the tennis racket as in a baseball bat, I want to be able to get into the hitting area and as I go to turn my hands, I do not want to get the face of the racket closed. So if a, if a player is rolling his hands and turning the racket over or turning the trademark on the baseball bat over, he's got an improper wrist roll. The hands turn. They hit here, drive, drive, drive. But right after they drive, there's a continuation of the bat from the back side to the front side, and my hands turn this way, so my knuckles are down here like a backhand in tennis and my front wrist does that so there's an extension of the line of this arm. This is a wrist flexion. So my hands turn this way and as you can see the face of the racket is here and not here. So a tennis racket it can be used as a good illustration of how to roll your wrist properly or how not to roll your wrist. So the point of contact is here. Now the last position is follow through. As I get over here, this elbow can extend. These knuckles are down in this position here. Now the top hand pulls the bat up here and this elbow bends. So as I'm hitting on the follow through, I'm turning the bat and it flicks right up to my shoulder. Now that's, that's a two hand follow through. We also have a one hand follow through. And the one hand follow through means that you hit with two hands. As you get through here, this elbow stays extended and this hand slides off the bat and you get a high follow through and this hand comes up here. Okay, a one hand follow through helps hitters to get good balance. Because as soon as I let go of my top hand here, it relaxes my shoulders and it keeps my balance over the plate. Sometimes a two hand follow through comes through here and pulls you back this way. So, and when you're teaching hitting, you have to know the effects of what a one-hand follow-through does versus a two-hand follow-through and know how to teach both of those. All right, so the five basic positions are, guys, first one is what? Comfortable stand. Second? Stride and caught. Stride and caught. Third? Check swing position. That a boy, Chuck. Okay, next one is what? Point of contact. And the last one is? Follow-through. So those are the five basic positions in every baseball swing. Now the next thing we want to cover is how the hands and arms work. And this is really the talent comes out in hitting is how your wrists work and how your arms work. Okay, top hand goes straight to the ball. Now if I finish in this position, actually I draw back this way. So there's no elbow down, hand back here, slapping this way. The elbow stays behind the wrist, it's actually a straight line push. Then as you swing level with your hands, the elbow comes in a little, and then you push that way. So it looks like this. All right, and if I put my hand on the bat and take a straight line push, flick the bat this way. Barrel stays on top. Now it's flat. Now it turns. And I'm doing that strictly with my wrists and not with my arms. So I'm going to give a straight line push. Now, the bottom hand, you turn your knuckles in this way, elbows in, and as you get to here, this wrist does this action. And this is where a one-hand drill comes in handy. So this wrist does not roll over. This wrist keeps the barrel up, you come through here, and then it turns, and I keep my knuckles under, which locks out my, my elbow at this point. So the hands turn right here, 
I get a good flick, head down, follow through. So that is how our hands work. So the three major areas I've just covered were balance, five basic hitting positions and one swing, and effective use of hands and elbows. So remember, the elbow gets behind the hand, comes straight in behind rather than collapsing in here. The front elbow stays down. Front elbow gets here, front elbow does not pan up this way. So you keep the front elbow down and then pull through, head down. Okay, so those are the basic beginnings when we're teaching hitting to give out definitions and terms so that your ball players know uh, how you explain things so that when you get in a game situation, there's good communication, understanding between you and your hitters. Okay, the next thing I like to do is go into the next phase, which would be the body movement awareness where the whole team and yourself go through the positions on hitting. Okay, guys, let's uh, do that right now. But before we do that, I'd like to show them some photos of major league hitters. Okay. Okay, guys, why don't you uh, stand up a second? Stand up right around me. Okay, here I want you to see, this is the beginning of Jose Conseco's hand position. And we notice he has a cocked wrist position and the bat is knotted a little bit forward. So this is the uh, way Conseco starts his wrist actions. Okay, in the second photo we have Eric Davis. You can see his elbow is behind his wrist and his wrists are jacked up and his bat is cocked forward. So that's the, the starting position for Eric Davis. The third photo, we have two swings here. One is of Jim Rice at point of contact where it shows his uh, bottom hand knuckles down and top hand knuckles up. Down below that is Corey Snyder hitting a home run and shows a wrist follow through. And you can see how he turned his hands at point of contact. He still got his head in and same with Jim Rice. Okay, the next, next photo is that of um, Jack Clark on a follow through when he's with the Yankees. He's got a good back foot pivot, strong front leg, and it shows the line of extension of the top arm with the wrist rounded out and the head down. We have another shot here of Jim Rice. Good pivot, strong front leg, head down, and it shows the wrists have turned and the barrel's finishing high. Now we have a couple here of Wade Boggs. And the first one shows his follow through with his bottom hand wrist is turned under this way. We have another follow through of Wade Boggs shows his bottom hand wrist is down and the top hand is rounded out in this manner. So these are some good follow through pitches uh, of the mechanics of hitting. And actually what I teach is what major leaguers do, except you have to come up with drills that helps uh, the ball players learn some of these uh, hand manipulations. All right, now, first thing we're gonna do is get our legs shoulder width apart. Let's get your weight on the inside edge of the balls of your feet. Okay, all of a sudden, just flex your knees. Everybody flex your knees, now lean over so you're right up off your heels. All right, let's get our head square with the pitcher. Okay, shoulders down and relax. Okay, the grip on the bat. Put the grip is gonna be right in the callus of the hands where the palm meets the fingers. Okay, we grip the bat in that manner. Okay, now one key in hitting is getting the bottom wrist turned in. When the bottom wrist is turned in, the elbow gets out of the way, so when you extend here, you can turn the bat and the elbow's out of the way. If the wrists are out, as you get into this hitting area, the end of the bat can go over. So guys, we wanna put our wrists in. Turn your wrists in. Okay, get your back elbow straight and behind you. All right, now we're gonna go through some balanced positions. All right, let's give a stride and cock. Okay, let's just pivot. All right. Okay, now I want you to set the bat down by the tips of your toes. Okay, you're gonna put your hands on your hips. Okay, now to feel balance, we're gonna bounce on the balls of your feet, stop, and then hold, your, and hold on the balls of your feet. Okay, ready? Bounce a little bit. Now stop and hold your feet there. All right, now I want you to do this. 
Give me heels out, toes in, and rock right in here. Turn around and face me, Chuck. Okay, right here. Turn around and face me. Okay. All right. Now, from uh, this position, we're going to do a stride and pivot. Okay, now I want you to look back at your back foot and make sure you rolled your toe. Okay, everybody look at your back foot. Go ahead, Bobby. Give me a step and pivot. Now, if someone does not pivot correctly, I will come in here and move the foot for them and make sure that they did get the pivot going. All right, now let's pick up the bats again. Now, if you've got hitters that are learning a pivot and bend their knees and bend over in this position here, a good word to use is stand tall. Stand tall means as they get through hitting, they're standing tall this way and they aren't all crumpled up. So stand tall is a good term to use. All right, let's go back into the five basic hitting positions. Okay, let's get our elbows down and back, wrist turned in, head on the ball. Okay, let's go stride in, hands back. Okay, next move is to pivot and bring the hands out front. Okay, now our hands are right out front. They aren't over here on the side someplace. All right, let's go extend, go to point of contact. Okay, turn the hands, head down, follow through. Okay, very good. Okay, now, let's do that again. Okay, ready. Okay, get a comfortable stance. Stride in, hands back, or stride and cock. Pivot, check swing position. Hands are right out front. My hands are out front. Okay, go to point of contact. Follow through. Now, when we teach the check swing position, this is not something that as we're hitting, that we're gonna stop and do it. So I'm not gonna swing, check my swing, and then hit. This is just the position of the hands as you go through the batting movement. Your hands lead. So we have a term called hands first, bat second, and not bat first, and then bring the hands through as in a sweeping motion. All right, now we're gonna get into effective use of hands. All right, let's put the uh, bat on your front shoulder here, okay, and put your right hand up, okay, and we're gonna put a stop sign up right here. Okay, put your bat on the other shoulder. Okay, put your hand up like a stop sign right there. Okay, you're gonna go stride in, hands back, pivot and push. All right, let's do that again. Stride in, hands back, Okay, pivot and push and head down. All right, now with my hand out front, I'm gonna go knuckles up. Everybody go knuckles up, draw your fist right back. Stride in, hands back, pivot and push, head down. All right, let's put two hands on the bat right now and let's get your back elbow up and we're gonna stride in, hands back and we're gonna push and flick your wrist. All right, let me get back here and look at you. Okay, again, stride in, hands back, Okay, now we're gonna pivot and check your swing out front. Now that your hands are out front and your elbows are bent, you're gonna push and circle your hands. All right, let's do that again. Stride in, hands back. Okay, pivot, get your hands out front. Now we're gonna push and circle the hands. So the bat is gonna be circled out front and the bat does not go flat behind you. Okay, now, Bobby, I wanna check out your stride and cocking action. Okay, now, when, when a hitter strides into the ball, he needs to have his front shoulder down. He's gonna close first, open second. Okay, now let me see your step. Okay, now at this point, he took a step and he opened right away. So he missed the striding and cocking action. So as a coach, you can come up here, put your hand on the front shoulder, his hand on the forearm, and turn him back. Okay, let me see you do that over again. Okay, stride and cock. Now I'm gonna force his front shoulder down draw his hands back. Now if the batter forces into your hand, he's opening too soon. So I could put my hand right here and go ahead and give me stride and cock and he never touches my hand. Now oftentimes, hitters don't understand what you're trying to teach them, so I take the bat. Okay, put your hand on my forearm, this hand right here, this way. Put your other hand on my shoulder. Now for them to see what you mean by keeping your weight back, Okay, now if I take my stride and I do it wrong, he's gonna feel pressure to the front. And if I do it right, he's not gonna feel any pressure on his hand. So now the person you're teaching realizes that there is a way of striding forward and still keeping your weight back. Okay, first wrist drill is gonna be 
with our lead hand. You're going to put one hand behind your back, which would be your right hand. Choke up on the bat. Okay, you're going to put your hand between your knees. You're going to cock your bat to the back shoulder. Hand stays down. You're going to flick the bat forward and backwards. Now, this wrist drill, the hand should be able to bring the barrel of the bat straight forward, straight back. So there is a transition of the bat from the back side to the front side. And there is no lumps in the swing, meaning the bat's not going like this and it's not sticking on my hand and I'm not being stiff. I'm getting a maximum amount of dynamic movement through my wrist. Now, as we're doing this drill, come up here, I'll come in, put my hand on the player's bat, and I'll help him flick his hands through if he's not doing it well enough or it's too tight. So we flick our hands through like that. That's how you make the barrel of the bat become a blur, turning it in your wrist. Okay, now let's go with two hands on the bat. Put your hands right between your knees. Bring the tip of the bat up to your back shoulder. Okay, flick it down through the bottom and bring it up high on the front. So my hands are staying right in the center line of my body and I'm learning to manipulate my wrist to turn the bat flat through my hands with good speed and acceleration. All right, so wherever my hands throw the barrel of the bat, I get a true line on hitting the ball. All right, <clears throat> now let's bring our hands right out front, straight in front of us. Tip the bat over the top of your head. Okay, now all we're going to do is circle the bat forward without tilting our shoulders. So I'm going to circle the bat, bring it right over my head. All right, now at this point, I am swinging level strictly with my wrist and I'm not using a tilt or dropping my back shoulder to swing the bat flat. Okay, relax, guys. All right, so now we can illustrate that we can manipulate our wrist and get the bat flat through the hitting area. Okay, now we're going to do some wrist accelerations. I'm going to go <clears throat> the bat from the tip of my back shoulder to the tip of my front shoulder, <clears throat> and I'm going to whip it through the center. Okay, let's see you guys whip the bat right through the center line and keep your elbows away from your body. Jason, keep your left elbow away from your body. All right, so my elbow is not collapsing in on me. I'm keeping my hands away. Okay, now that's a good wrist acceleration to learn how to move your hands fast through the hitting area. Okay, now the next swing drill we're going to do is what I call a loop and hammer. I'm going to get my hands to hang the bat towards the second baseman or first baseman or right field if I'm a right hand batter. Now with this drill, and this is a drill that gets the hands moving first and gets the barrel moving second. The barrel has a longer way to go, but my hand's still going a short distance to the ball because it's going straight, but the barrel's traveling tri twice as far. I'm really uh, torquing this bottom wrist and I'm going to flick my hands right through. So if you look at my swing from the back side, you see the bat's coming straight through. Top arm pushes straight through, and I'm going to push and flick my wrist. All right, let's try that, guys. Okay, let's hang the barrel of the bat. Okay, let's go. Push and circle. All right, now a key in this drill is not letting the barrel of the bat go below your hand. The top hand's got to take over right here, so you're in your check swing position. And actually what we're doing is, instead of taking the bat here and hammering from here, we're hammering the ball right out front. So my front wrist gets right out front, and then I circle the bat right around this wrist, right out here. So we're going to push and circle the bat. Let's try it again. Okay, we're going to do a loop into a hammer. Okay, stride and cock. Okay, push and circle. Okay, one more time. Stride and cock, push and circle. All right, very good. The loop and hammer. Okay, this is a drill to learn fast hands and accelerate the bat. You can also have your hands back in these positions, this position, this position, as long as you know how to push your hands and circle the bat on the ball. This just helps you learn to accelerate the bat because the barrel has a longer ways to go than the top hand. So this is a drill here and when you get to the one hand follow through stuff, this is a drill here to get extension. 
So this is a drill from here to here, this is a drill in here, and this is a follow-through drill to get the elbow extended. Okay. All right, now we're going to take this body movement awareness and we're going to start setting up a T-drill in progression, and we're going to do ball-up drills in progression and cover all these movements and give the hitter an opportunity to learn the movements of hitting. You need to control your mind muscle memory pattern so when you go in to hit, you just see ball and your body reacts correctly. All right, let's move into the first T drill. Okay, the first drill we're gonna use is a one knee, a one knee T drill. And what we're doing here is we're controlling the lower half of the body so we're only using the eyes and the hands. And we want to see if the batter, without a ball being pitched, can pick the ball off the tee without hitting the rubber underneath. And we're just trying to hit line drive straight ahead. So what we've done is isolate the lower half of the body from the upper half. All right, we'll let Chuck have a few hits here. Okay, go ahead, Chuck. Okay, give me a little more power there. It's gonna turn back and turn forward. Okay, let me come down and hit one here and then you're gonna feed me. Okay, stand right up there. Okay, move away from the camera a little bit. All right, now, to do this, I'm gonna put the ball of my foot here. This foot's braced. I'm gonna get back and I'm gonna turn back and come forward with my hands. Go ahead, Chuck, put another one on for me, thanks. I'm gonna draw back. Now, what I'm trying to stay away from is dropping the barrel of the bat and hitting under here. So this is a good way to teach this and find out if your hitters are getting true to the ball. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw back and come back to the ball. Okay, Chuck. Now, Chuck is an 11-year-old little leaguer. Okay, so that's too far away from you. About like that. Go ahead, draw back and come forward. That a boy. Okay, draw back and come forward. Okay, so he's picking the ball pretty good with his hands as he's uh, hitting the ball off the tee. Now the next step to this, we can just move this out of the way and I can do some ball ups for him. So now we're going to the eye hand coordination of a moving ball. Okay, you ready? Atta boy. Atta boy. That's it, Chuck. Atta boy. Okay, so now we've done, we've isolated the hands so that he's picking the ball nice and quick with his hands as he's turning his wrist. Now, the, the next position we're gonna deal with is the general position of the body at contact and follow through. And I often teach this by telling someone to hold your follow through and hold your balance. So now we're working the legs and the body and the eyes and the hands. So I'm gonna stride, draw back, pivot, and I'm gonna hold my balance here. Now many times hitters fall back this way or they go into these positions or their head comes out and this is a good way of teaching them the body movement awareness they need to maintain control. So I'm gonna stride, wait, yeah, okay, put one more on. Okay, stride, wait, and hit. All right, now I'm gonna hold my follow through. All right, Chris, why don't you jump up here and take a few hacks. Okay, let Chris have a turn here. Okay, me uh, measure it out a little bit so you know if you're close enough. Got a boy. That's it. Okay, one more. Okay, he did that very well. Okay, let's bring uh, Chuck up here again and let him get a few swings at this. Okay. Now I want you to uh, pivot and keep your head down. Okay, that's okay. Try another one. Here we go. Move up closer to it. Okay, I want you to hold your follow through after you hit. Go ahead, hit. Pivot and hit. Hold it right there. Now, he's in an excellent position. 
he has a good pivot. He's closed off a little bit. He's got his head down, his body, his shoulders are centered over his hips. Did a good hand turning action out front. There's not much coaching I can do when he does it like that. But there are a lot of other players that don't finish this way. They'll finish with their head over here. They'll finish with their heel down this way. They'll pull off the ball. Now this is about the only way that you can get in and help the hitter feel his position. And you tell him to hold your follow through, and if you finish good here, then you're going to have a good position at point of contact. All right, now we're going to take the same drill, and we're going to do some ball toss. All right, let's have uh, Chris Fester come on up. Okay, now, what we're looking at here in this particular drill at this time is a balanced position, a pivot, and a head down. We're going to establish this position before we go any further. Okay, a little ball ups here. Set. Set. Okay, Chuck, grab your bat and jump in here. Good job, Chris. Okay, ready? Atta boy. That's it. Nice job. Okay, he has a very good pivot, very good hand actions, and both, both of them do. Now let's see how the balance nice drill position transfers from the batting tee training right to actual batting practice. Notice the hands lead the knob of the bat through first, the barrel comes through second. Eyes are focused on the ball while the back foot pivots, opening the hips quickly. At point of contact, the head is down, arms are extended, the shoulders are balanced over the hips with a brace front leg. To feel the balanced position, we momentarily hold the follow through. All right, so that's the, the second T step is to balance, pivot, and head down. Okay, now the third area we're going to get into is how to use the hands in hitting and in order to do this I'm going to do a demonstration in the batting cage first to show you that it can be done actively with live hitting or off the machine hitting and then we're going to come back and show you how we teach this off a of batting tee so right now let's get situated and come on over to the batting cage here and we'll watch some live hitting alright now this is the fun part when we get in the cage and actually do some hitting. And what I want to show you and illustrate to you before we actually do the drill is how the loop and hammer action works. And this is where you really get into good wrist hitting, manipulating the hands so that you accelerate the bat with your hands without sweeping. Now actually, my top hand is, all my top hand is going to do is go straight to the ball. And as it's going straight to the ball, the barrel of the bat's got to play catch up with my hand. So right in here, it accelerates. I do not let the barrel of the bat get below my hands. I do not elevate my hands and bring the bat down. Now, most of us would think, with the barrel up, trying to swing level, that the barrel would come down. And there are some people that swing, and they do bring the barrel down, and they do get under the ball. But if you have good top hand discipline, you can come right in here and loop and hammer. So I'm going to loop and hammer this bat right through the ball. I'm going to do it with this bat, and then in a few minutes, I'll do it with the, with the thunder stick. Okay, here we go. Jason, put the machine on. All right, hanging the bat. I'm going to push and circle the bat. Hang in the bat, push and circle. So I'm going to cock in my front knee and pivot. Okay, I'll go right field. Hang the bat, wait, shoot it out to right. I'm going to stride, wait, and shoot it out to right. One more to right field. Right there. All right, I'll go back up the middle. Right up the middle. Gonna hang the bat a little bit high. Keep my hands back. Okay, high pitch again. Right up the middle. Okay, up the middle again. Right up the middle. 
Okay, now we're going to turn on the ball, turn on it, and pull. Okay, now we're going to take the short bat, and I'm going to juice my wrist, push and juice my wrist real fast. Woo! That thing really jumps when you hit it. Okay, I'm going to hang the bat and juice it. Okay, now I'm going to go into stride in, hands back, wait, wait, wait. I use this bat here. Push and circle. Okay, that shut the machine off. Okay, fix the machine. Hit the cord up the middle. Alright, now we're going to work on a little more accuracy using a real thin, what they call an Eastern Thunder Stick. This builds up the confidence in your eyes and hands ability to make contact. And all set, Jason? Okay, here we go. Machine running? Yeah. Yeah, I got a little thin stick here. Just going to look at the ball and flick my wrist. Hit straight ahead, line drives. Okay, hold the ball. Okay, now, to learn some good precision and accuracy, we're going to try doing this one-handed. Okay, here we go. Okay, there's not much power in the lead hand, just need some precision. Okay, the balls are a little high. Okay, we'll go right field. We'll go right field. Okay, we'll try center field. Right up the middle. Center field. Okay, not too bad. Center field again. Okay, we're going left field. Now I get out and turn. A little bit more. Okay, I'm putting the bat on the ball, making contact, one hand. Okay, now we're going to go with two hands. Now watch these hands manipulate the bat. Okay, watch the back elbow push behind the hands. Okay, one more. Okay, good enough. All right, so there you've seen some real fast hand manipulations with the wrist, and this is the next drill we're going to do, is teach the kids how to loop and hammer and how to finesse the bat and manipulate the wrist right through the hitting area. Now let's move on to the loop and hammer drill. Okay, we're all ready to start the loop and hammer wrist action drill phase, and as I mentioned earlier in our introduction, I wanted to highlight some innovative training drills for teaching wrist hitting. And this phase is very important because I feel the real talent in hitting comes out in what the eyes and the hands can do together. And the body complements what the eyes and hands do. So right now we've got a balance and a pivot and a head down. We want to start working on accelerating the bat with our hands. Now, in order to get going on the loop and hammer phase, the loop is the part of the bat that goes right into this area, and the hammer is this action. Now what's happening here is the hands are accelerating first out into the hitting area, setting up the hammer action right here which snaps around. So actually I'm going to push and then the bat is going to circle right around the wrist. So when this wrist moves about three to four inches from here to here, this bat goes all the way around. So you get a nice circling action. So when we swing level, we swing level in the hinge of the lead wrist. And I don't swing a bat, I bring it. So my hands come right out front, I'm bringing it out front, and I'm going to push and flick my wrist, and my top hand is going to accelerate the barrel of the bat around the bottom hand. 
all right? And wherever I throw and push my hands, I want my hitting surface to come out on line with the ball. All right, now, as I'm hanging the bat here, I'm gonna push and circle, okay? And I've got the bat hung, I'm gonna push and circle. All right, now what some hitters may do is they get the hitting surface below the hands. So as soon as they get to here, this drops under and they hit here. All right, so we're gonna do some drills to try to train this, this position. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, is gonna introduce you to some small bats. Now the Bratz bat is a weighted bat. And inside the Bratz bat, usually they're 34 inches long. These are a little heavier. This one's about 23 ounces. Uh, we take off the red part and we have a small handle bat. And this is for manipulating wrist actions. And this is called a lad bat, and I don't believe they make them anymore. And we can do loop and hammers or lead wrist actions with the lad bat too. All right, so right now, what I'm gonna do, is put one hand behind my back, one hand behind my back, I'm hanging it this way, and I'm gonna push and circle the bat like that. All right, next one again, I'm gonna hang the bat and flick my wrist, and the bat's gonna push and circle here. Now, some hitters may go flat like this. What we're looking for is to keep the barrel of the bat up and hinge it around here. I like to have kids do it this way, but some may do it this way and flick it through. Okay, let's have uh, Chuck come on over here and try a couple. Okay, put one hand behind your back. Okay, ready? Step and flick it off. Out of boy. Couple more. That's it. Okay, another one. Push and circle right off. All right, let me see a turn. Flick your hand right on the ball. Okay, good job. Let's have Bobby Henderson come on up. Okay, now let's try uh, one off the tee here. Put your hand behind your back. Okay, he's got one hand behind the back, and he's gonna push and circle it, okay? One more. Okay, now we take this, and we go into a, a ball up action, and he's gonna flick his hands on the ball. Set. Ready? Okay, flick it right through there. Flick it right through there. Okay, one more, pop it right through. Okay, one more, pop it right through. Okay, let's have Chris Festa come on up. Okay, now, you're gonna wait, wait right here, Chris. Okay, the next drill we're gonna do, that's the bottom hand drill. Next one is the top hand. This is a lot tougher to do, because now, instead of getting support in here with the elbow slapping around this way, you're gonna push and circle here. So watch the line of my hand, I'm going straight out here, now I gotta flick it, circling it this way. It's pretty hard to do, but when you train and do this, you become very accurate with your hands. Okay, let's let uh, Chris come on up and hit a couple off the tee. Okay, you're going to go uh, right-handed. Put your hand behind your back. Put your other hand behind your back. Okay, all right. Okay, move up a little closer if you have to. Okay, get your elbow behind your hand. Okay, he's going to push and circle the back. Go ahead. Okay, another one. Okay, now we take that and now we move into the ball toss. Now, of course, he's gonna hit about 35 or 40 balls like that and then, then we go into the next stage. Okay, let's see you do some ball ups here. Out of boy. Yeah. All right, now I want you to pick up the lightweight bat, the blue one. Okay, now we go to the loop and hammer. I like to train the teenage boys with a lightweight bat so that they can completely manipulate the weight of the bat, not have a heavier bat take them. They're gonna take the bat. So right now, he's gonna go with a lightweight bat and do some loop and hammers. Okay, let's get set up here. Okay. This hand, the barrel hangs over, the elbow stays in behind, this wrist is twisted under this way, and he's gonna push and circle the bat. All right, boy. OK, 
Okay, ready? Go ahead. Okay, he's actually picking the ball clean. He's not trying to swing level. His technique is bringing the bat level to the ball and he's picking it right off the tee. You can really hear the crack of the bat when he hits these. Okay, now to pick up the accuracy, we're gonna use the thin thunder stick and he's gonna work on this. That a boy. Okay, one more. Okay, let's get Billy Knight in here. Okay, Billy Knight, we're gonna do the ball toss with Billy with a loop and hammer, and we'll start out with a lightweight bat. Okay, move up here a little closer. Okay, I'm gonna feed the ball up, and what we're looking at is hand acceleration. Okay, push and circle. What's that? Push and circle. Okay. Okay, one more. Okay, pick up the thunder stick. Okay, now you can see his hands are moving real fast. He's just pushing and he's picking the ball. Let's see if he can do it with the thunder stick. That a boy. That's it. That's it. Okay, good job, Billy. Good job. Let me see that, baby. Okay, so now you can see that we've taken an 11-year-old little leaguer and we have some high school teenage boys that are flicking their wrists. Now that's how you train hitters to get fast hands. They can't do it in a weight room. You don't get stronger by hitting by lifting weights. You get stronger by having the right technique. So hitting is a quick reaction. It's just a push and a flick of the wrist, but you've got to know how to handle your wrist. You've got to know how to manipulate your wrist and you gotta know how to teach wrist hitting. Okay, Th these drills here that I just showed you are the fastest ways to get kids to manipulate the bat fast in the hitting area. Now let's see how the loop and hammer drill transfers from batting tee training to actual batting practice. Hanging the barrel of the bat forward of the hands helps train the hitter to use wrist and hand leverage to create enormous barrel head speed while still swinging level. This is one of the important techniques of teaching wrist hitting. An example of this kind of leverage is the snapping force created at the end of a buggy whip. The hitter now has learned to swing level by picking the ball clean out of its flight with precision and power. Okay, as, as you can see, we're taking things along step by step. We first did the direction of the bat to the ball hitting on one knee. Then we did pivot and head down, we established the body positions. Then we did wrists and accelerating the hands. Now we're gonna to try to take the hands and place the barrel of the bat on the ball at various places in the strike zone. A hitter shouldn't worry about going to right field or left field, just react to the ball. So if I'm gonna stride and wait and the ball's away, I'm gonna take it, lead my hands through and hit it into right. If the ball is inside, I'm gonna pivot get my hands through here and bring them out front. So watch how my hands come through on the inside pitch. I'm not going around. I'm bringing my hands through. Now they're out front and now I flick them here. So actually all I do is take the back of my hand and go to here. Back of the hand right here, top hand right here, fat part of the bat inside corner. The ball hits my bat here. I've got the hitting surface going over to right. Ball hits me here up the middle. Ball hits the bat here, it's off to left field. So in all three positions, I've got my hitting surface like my tennis racket on the ball and I'm hitting a solid shot. If I'm going right field all the way and the pitch is down away, I'm gonna let my hands come through this way and throw that way. So to right field, if you can get my feet in this shot, on a right field, I do not get a full pivot. On an inside pitch, I really have to open my hips and get my back foot to turn. So here we have an, an Osborne two-stem tee that I like to use for this drill. Now when I go to hit the outside pitch, I hit it here and my bat misses or goes over the, top, the front ball. If I go for the front ball, my hands come inside so I don't hit this ball and I come through on the front. So my teammate could say curve ball, I hit this one, or he could say fast ball and I hit this one, or they could say outside, inside. 
So if I had somebody to help me on the tee and I got the ball lined up with the center line on my body, all right, and you're going to say outside. Stride, hit outside. Ready, inside. All right, and I'll do two more. Okay, ready? This time we'll go inside. And now I'm going to stride, wait, and go outside. Okay, let me get one more to the outside part of the plate. Uh, stride, wait, and hit the outside pitch. And every time I stride, I'm stepping in the same place. Stepping back towards the pitcher and driving the ball to right field and hitting the ball to right field with power. Power to right and power to left. Okay, let's have the guys move in and we're going to show you how to train for an inside out swing. Okay, we're going to move along the netting here. You stay back a little bit. And what's going to happen is you put your hands about an inch away from the netting. You get in a regular hitting position. Now some hitters are going to force and cast the bat out into a wall or a backstop or the netting. Or you can pivot, get your hands out front in the check swing position and circle your hands out front. So I'm going to push and circle and I'm going to pivot. I have a bat shoulder relationship. My bat and my shoulder almost keep the same distance as I come through until I'm ready to use my hands. Okay guys, let's line up and take some of these uh, cuts at the ball. Okay, let me direct you through. Okay, get your hands back. Okay, stride in, hands back. Okay, pivot, get your hands through and flick your wrist. Atta boy. Okay, let's do a couple on your own. Stride, pivot, hit. Okay, ready? Stride, pivot, hit. Okay, you notice these hitters are getting their hands through by pushing them through and not by bringing them in here. You do not tie your hands up, you bring them through and push them out front. Now this is very important technique because when you hit, the idea in hitting is to get the fat part of the bat on the ball and this is how you do it. All right, let's go to the batting team of Bobby Henderson. Come on up here. Okay, ready? Let's go, ready, inside. Okay, ready, outside. Okay, I'm going to have him move forward a little bit. So make sure he's not cheating a little bit and make it tough for his hands. Okay, measure it up so you can reach it. Right there. Okay, ready, pull your hands through, right field. Very good. Okay, ready, right field. Okay, let's go inside. Ready, hit inside. Ready, hit outside. Okay, let's have Chucky come on up here. Okay. Okay, line it up, move in a little closer. Okay, get your hands set. Okay, ready, inside. Atta boy, ready, outside. Nice hit. All right, let's try that again my star performer here. Ready, inside. Good shot. Ready, outside. Nice hit. Okay, so here we have, once again, 11-year-old boy. He's picking the ball clean off the tee. Move in a little bit. Let's go with right field. Ready, right field. Nice job. Ready, inside. Okay, nice job, Chucky. Now that's how you train hitters to take their hands and go to various places around the strike zone and hit the ball sharply and they're able to do it because they got balance, they got basic hitting positions going and their eyes and hands are working the barrel of the bat to the ball. Okay, we just did the uh, T drill for the outside inside pitch and now we developed a ball toss drill for it. Okay, move forward a little bit. Now I'm getting out on the outside corner I'm going to elevate the ball on the outside corner and he's going to drive it in the right. Atta boy. Okay, so now he's learning the inside out swing out front and if I'm going to go inside I'll throw it over there and he'll turn on it. Right out front there. Good job. 
Now let's see how the inside outside pitch batting tee drill transfers from the batting tee training to actual batting practice. The batter is now training his skills and improving his ability to hit the ball to all fields with precision and power. Good job. Okay, wait on the ball and go right field. Okay, let's go left field. Turn those hands on the ball quick. Left field. Good try. Okay, another one. Left field. Good hit. Okay, another one. Left field. Good hit. Okay, wait on the ball and go right field. Nice hit. Okay, another one. Right field. Put a couple balls in the rack, Billy. Okay, right field. Okay. Okay, I'll go right field. Hang the bat. Wait. Shoot it out to right. Gonna stride, wait, and shoot it out to right. One more to right field. Right there. All right, I'll go back up the middle. Right up the middle. Okay, now we're gonna turn on the ball, turn on it, and pull. Okay, again. Stride, wait, turn on it. Ready? Stride, wait, turn on it. Okay, I'm gonna hang the bat. Loop and hammer. All right, now we've gone inside, outside pitch, and the next thing is, is to teach how to hit a curveball off a batting tee, all right? And we're gonna do this by disciplining the stride and cocking actions. When we're hitting a curveball, it's not so much that the ball curves, it's that the ball changes speed. And changing the speed, when a guy cuts the curve, the hitter gets out on the front side and your hitting actions break down. That's why you have to maintain strong leg positions at the plate. So when you stride into a ball, you stay strong. You don't let your legs bend on you and now you lose your strong hitting position. In this case, we gotta be able to close off the front toe. So I actually lead, you can get a shot of my front foot, I lead with the side of my foot and the heel is up. I land on the inside, ball of my foot and I block my weight. My back knee, back knee is slightly flexed, front shoulder down, and now I'm gonna push and circle and get out of the way. I'm gonna push and circle and pivot. All right, and this is how we're gonna do this off a of batting tee. Now, as we get into this position here, I'm gonna stride in, hands back, wait, wait, wait. Now I'm gonna shift my weight with my, with my back leg and drive with my hands. Instead of shifting my weight with my stride, I'm gonna shift with my hands. Wait and hit. All right, now we can do this off of ball toss drills and off of tee drills. Okay, Billy, come on up. Okay, here we go. Okay, stride in, hands back, wait, wait, wait. All right. Okay, stride in, hands back, wait, wait, wait. Okay, stride in, hands back, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm gonna stride, wait, and shift my weight when the ball gets here. Okay, this is how you discipline yourself to hit curveballs. Stride, wait, turn on it. Okay, again. Stride, wait, turn on it. Ready? Stride, wait, turn on it. There's three in a row in the same spot. All I did was shift my weight with my hands and not commit myself to the stride. Okay, I'm gonna have Chuck go right to the ball toss drill instead of the tee. Move up here a little closer. Okay, ready? Okay, stride, wait, hit. a boy. Ready, stride, wait, hit. Give me a little more of a step out front. Ready, stride, wait, hit. It's okay, give me a good pivot. Ready, stride, wait, hit. Now let's see how the striding and cocking hitting drill transfers from the batting tee training to actual batting practice. This is a training method to learn how to keep the weight back 
giving the eyes and hands time to time the speed of the ball so the hitter's body weight will shift with a swing and not with a stride. This is the kind of movement training needed to hit the off-speed pitch like the curveball or the changeup. Stride, weight, turn on it. Weight, turn on it. Nice hit. Stride, weight, hit. Go see you hang the bat. Hang the bat and whip it and turn on it. Nice. Okay, hang the bat, whip it and turn on it. Okay, one more. Okay. Now that's how you develop the movement actions for hitting the off-speed pitch or the curveball. Okay, the next section we want to get into is the reaction. Now we methodically have brought the hitters through a T-drill system and a ball toss system and we're progressing along the way. Now what we like to do is get them to see and react. So what I'm going to try to do is fool the hitter. Now I'm going to get about 12 feet away, throw an underhand ball toss and get them to see if they can react to the ball. Okay. All right, I'm going to throw the ball out here low off the front knee so he hits it out front. If I throw a blooper, it's going to come up and come down out front. I'm not going to try to roll it, throw the ball and rush it by him. All right, it's very important that the ball feeder knows how to feed the ball. All right, ready? Okay, give me a good pivot. Okay, now I'm going to start moving the ball around. Okay, be quick. Okay, ready? Wait. Okay, ready? Be quick. I'm trying to get in on his hands. Ready? Be quick. Okay, and now stride, wait, hit. Good job. Now he hit the slow one and the hard ones with the same rate of power. He didn't elongate and get out here. He stayed within himself in this area, compact, and then he exploded out. Okay, let's get Chucky in here and see if you can handle these, baby. Let's go. Yeah, move up a little closer. Okay, right there. Okay, when my hand comes down, you stride. Ready? Stride, wait, hit. Atta boy. Ready? Be quick. Okay, get your hands back. Be quick. Atta boy. Okay, ready? Stride, wait, hit. Okay, ready? Stride, wait, hit. Okay, last one. Ready? Stride, wait, hit. Okay, last two. Ready? Stride, wait, hit. Nice job. Ready, stride, wait, hit. Okay, let's see you hang the bat and do a loop and hammer action. You do that, hang it over. Ready, right out front. Good job. One more, hang the bat, push and circle. Okay, one more loop and hammer. Ready, right out front. That's it. We've taken the kids from the beginning premise of the five basic hitting positions, balance, and effective use of hands and we brought them along a T system. So we went from one knee, hitting, getting the eyes and hands on the ball. Then we went to standing up, pivoting, keeping the head down. We established that. Then we went to the wrist drills to accelerate the hands. We established that. Then we're gonna go to the inside, outside pitch and throw the hands around the plate. We established that. And then we're gonna go to the off-speed pitch, striding and cocking and waiting and shifting the weight with the hands that way, the body complements the hands rather than the body getting ahead of the hands and then breaking down. Then the final drill was a fast, slow ball toss drill in which we're looking to get the reactions of the hitter. So they're going to stride, see, hit. Stride, look, react, and hit. And that's what hitting is all about. And when you've got hitters that know how to hit this way, they're all a threat. Yes, they strike out. Yes, they pop up. And they hit home runs. But they're a threat. And my 7th, 8th, and ninth batters in my lineup, they can get their bat on the ball and start rallies from the back end of the order because they know how to move a bat and they know how to wait on a pitch. In conclusion, I'd like to thank my hitting demonstrators for a tremendous job they did. Chucky, thank you very much. Bobby, thank you. Chris, thank you. 
Billy Knight, thank you very much. Guys did a great job. And in conclusion, this batting program takes a little while to put in. With my batting school, it takes me about five days to get through all the drills and give the kids the proper repetition they need to become efficient hitters. With my high school team, it takes six or seven practices to get this program in. But once the program is in, now I can concentrate on pitching and defense, and I'm confident that my players know how to drill on hitting and know how to hit. Now, like I said before, they strike out and they pop up like everybody else, but in the end, these hitters are a threat to put the ball in play. At the same time, I'd like to say that uh, softball coaches can use the same type of batting techniques that I've used here with baseballs. You simply use softballs and softball bats and use the same type of uh, batting mechanics for softball. In the beginning of the tape, I mentioned that we all have our own style and philosophy of teaching hitting. And I'm very happy to share with you today some of my ideas and part of my programs on teaching hitting and I hope they'll be useful to you, to you and your players during the up and coming season. Good luck coaches. This has been the all new How to Teach and Learn the Art of Hitting with Coach Harvey Krupnick.